one of the truths is that there are three branches of government, not four. There are three. Mm -hmm. And we've had, you know, a very helpful Supreme Court ruling on Chevron deference saying courts do not have to defer to what these agencies, these bureaucrats say the law is. That was a very helpful ruling. But that doesn't do anything about the staffers who continue to rule by fiat over us all. Um, Let's talk about some of the other truths in Truths, the Future of America First. What's the point of writing this book, Vivek? What, why are you, you doing this now, defining the future of America First? Look, I think that there are a few different directions that America First can go. So one of the things I do expose, particularly in the beginning of the book, is that there are some intellectual rifts in our own movement that I think we're stronger for if we recognize on immigration, on trade, not so much on foreign policy, but immigration and trade in particular, right? Is it a protectionist objective, objective or is it more of a libertarian objective? We don't, we don't touch on that too deeply, but I, I expose that in the book. But the real question is filling a deeper vacuum. What does the current conservative movement actually stand for? We've gotten very good at criticizing the other side, identifying what we're against, right? We're against wokeism and transgenderism and climatism and covidism. We're against the race, gender, sexuality, climate agenda. But what exactly do we stand for? And the thesis I offer in this book is we stand for truth, actually. That's what we believe. And the things that I lay out in this book, if I wrote them 10, 20, 30 years ago, I would tell you to save your money and not buy the book because the truths in this book are so obvious that it shouldn't require a book to actually justify them. Today, I'd give you the opposite warning is if you repeat many of the things that you do read in this book, you're going to be potentially taking real risk, risk of losing your job or your kids getting a bad grade in school because that's the cultural environment we live in today. And so my goal in writing this was to arm a lot of everyday Americans with the hard facts and arguments to be able to have the dinner table conversations that they're otherwise not having. And I do think that's how we save the country, Megan, is all of us starting to speak openly again. Say in public what you'll say in private at the dinner table. I've This is my fourth book. I've written, this is my fourth book in the last four years, but I did things a little bit differently in this one. This book is not and does not pretend to be an academic exposition. At the end of every chapter, there's five hard truths laying out five key facts out of that chapter that somebody can take with them to the dinner table on debates about the trans ideology, to climate ideology, to whether nationalism is a bad word, to the nuclear family, to arm people every day to probably state what their true beliefs really are, but with the benefit of what some of the facts are that this book helps them bring to those dinner table conversations. That's how I think we ultimately save the country. It's fun to read it in written form. It's also very fun to watch you debate it live. There was a viral clip of you with our pal Charlie Kirk at, I think, the University of Pittsburgh last week, where a young woman who, bless her heart, seemed a little confused on exactly why she's a Kamala Harris voter. And and Charlie did some rhetorical battle with her, and then you did some, not battle, but had a back and forth with her that was very interesting when there was an attempt to force her to say, what exactly is it about the Trump agenda that you don't like or the Kamala Harris agenda that you do? And here's just a bit of how that went. I disagree with uh, the some of the uh, laws that are being pushed in Congress um, that are against the LGBTQ community and the trans community. My view is that If you're a fully grown adult, 18 or above, you're free to live how you want, dress how you want, marry who you want, if you want, if you're over the age of 18. I agree. But you are not free to indoctrinate children in schools who are not yet of the age of consent. You are not free, just as you're a 17-year-old or a 15-year-old can't get a tattoo on their own, I don't think that you should be able to go until the age of 18. Do we agree on the fact that Adults should be able to live freely while still treating children differently. If so, we're on the same side of this issue. I agree with the majority of what you said. However, I, I don't think that you're understanding the um, the implications of the laws that are trying to be passed. My only ask is forget the personal attacks or the stylistic attacks. Focus on substance. The more we debate that, the stronger we're going to be as a country. So I don't know what platform it was that that 
yeah. censored your use of the term chemical castration, but that's what you had said there, that we shouldn't be doing that to, yep. to minors. This plays right into one of the themes of truths, the future of America first, which is there are two genders. Right. And I think that what we see is when we talk about this across the country, most people actually share the same foundational value set on this in common. It's grounded in hard biological truth. So I sort of unpack a couple of the trans dilemmas that the transgender ideology poses, even for people who may have hard convictions in what they think their beliefs are. So there's two X chromosomes, you're a woman, X and a Y, you're a man. But one of the mysteries here is it is the same LGBTQIA plus ideology that says the sex of the person you're attracted to is hardwired on the day you're born that now says your own biological sex is totally fluid over the course of your life. That's a paradox. It's a further paradox that actually there is no gay gene, but there are two sex chromosomes. So that's actually particularly an ironic case to say that the one that has no gene is the one that's fixed immutably at birth. But the one that has definitive chromosomes is the one that's totally fluid over the course of your life. There's, there's other contradictions we explore as well, which is the fact that on one hand, if you say that this is a disability or a mental health disorder, you're considered to be transphobic. That if a kid says that their gender doesn't match their biological sex, that that is an evidence of a mental health disorder. That's my belief. But to say that many people will label that transphobic at the same time that they will say it is transphobic not to have public health insurance pay for gender affirming care or, or actual gender conversion surgery because it qualifies under the Americans with Disabilities Act. So I try to go factually through the chapter in arming people at home with at least these hard facts to be able to have the open arguments at the dinner table that they're not having in public. And one of the things I, I did in that chapter, Megan, is I closed it out with a personal story from the campaign that I hadn't shared before, which is actually one instance where there was a one of the embeds, one of the media embeds, the press embeds on our following our presidential campaign. You know, she would challenge me on this issue repeatedly in front of the camera. But one of the conversations we ended up having was actually um, off camera, but I could tell that it was a really meaningful issue to her. Turns out she identified as, as non-binary. So I don't know if she would even object to me referring to her as she. I thought she was a woman. And, you know, she ended up, it was a deeply personal conversation that we had where I actually got to understand from her own experience, when did she believe that she was of one gender versus the other, what that struggle was like, a little bit about her family upbringing, some challenges she had overcome. Turned out to be one of the hardest working press embeds in our own press corps that was following us. Somebody I thought actually did a great and did her best to do an objective job. I talk a little bit in that chapter of how we actually built a great personal relationship and bond over the course of the campaign, even though we disagree deeply on my own views or her views on the trans debate and what that means for policy. And I think that that's also one of the paths to unite the country, which is even on issues like this, I'm not going to compromise on standing for what I believe is true. OK, standing for truth. But that still gives us the opportunity to build relationships with other people by saying that, you know, what, we're not going to build our relationship based on settling our difference of opinion on this question. But we can build a relationship based on still agreeing or even engaging on matters outside of this particular debate, well, which we otherwise you, decided was an irreconcilable difference. So that's I was one you. of my takeaways from the campaign, one she remains a personal friend. But let's, yeah. let's get real. The most, most of the trans community activists will not even speak to somebody like you because their position is you're trying to eliminate them as humans, that you don't recognize, quote, their right to exist and they don't, and that's because you won't stand behind the transing of kids in the medical community, minors who can't consent to these procedures. You won't consent to having this ideology thrust upon them in third grade, as was done to my two sons, uh, first the older, um, at our old school. Like that's where the rubber yeah. really hits the road because that's where we're really gonna have to fight. It does, and and, and I think the reality is that goes for trans activists, which is a tiny minority of a tiny overall minority. But what's happening in the country is we're not really suffering from a tyranny of the majority in the United States. We are suffering from a tyranny of the fringe minority. And the dilemma is our constitution and our republic and the safeguards and the guardrails we have built into our legal system are really good at protecting against a democratic tyranny of the majority. 
there's nothing really there to safeguard against a cultural tyranny of the fringe minority. That's actually up to us. And, you know, one of the things I've learned, Megan, is that there's two approaches. I learned this over the course of my presidential campaign and observing, you know, other players in that arena as well, is that sometimes what happens is that you have two levers you could pull. Okay, one is we're going to have one country in the end. You're either going to compromise on core principle and policy or you can actually take a more compromising approach on style without actually being compromising on principle or policy. One of the things I've found is sometimes when we fall into the trap of actually going guns blazing on style, when push comes to shove, look at the Republican politicians in the end, many of them do actually end up compromising on policy or principle in the end. One of the things I'm trying to do both with this book and the way in which we're going to college campuses like the one you aired before across the country is to be able to engage in an affable manner with people who deeply disagree with us, but without compromising at all on the core principle of standing for objective truth. Did you know that there's nearly one trillion bucks of infrastructure and pandemic funds yet to be spent? That's right, there is still a massive amount of money that the lame duck administration is pushing hard to spend in their last few months in office. If the president is able to push these funds out, we could see another prolonged inflation surge just like we did during COVID. But there is hope. A gold IRA from Birch Gold Group can be an inflation hedge for your savings in uncertain times. To see how to protect your IRA or 401k, get your free info kit on gold by texting the word MK to 989898. Birch Gold makes it seamless to roll over your retirement account while preserving your tax-advantaged status. Don't wait for the president's spending spree to potentially tank the dollar even further. Protect your financial future now by diversifying. Text MK to the number 989898 for your free info kit from Birch Gold. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.